As the road to WrestleMania is coming to a close, I'm sitting here and I'm watching the road to WrestleMania. And one thing has kind of switched of what I think should happen in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Before, I was on the stand. I was sitting here and standing here and saying to myself, Roman Reigns needs to win at WrestleMania 32, despite all the fans booing him and despite all this and that, he needs to win at WrestleMania 32 because if you want to legitimize this guy, he needs a big time WrestleMania win. And so that's why I was saying like, you know, they've done it in the past with John Cena. John Cena would get booed out of buildings, but it didn't matter if John Cena was getting booed out of buildings. He sank or swim. He won the big one. There was no BS involved. He won those big time matches. But the more I think about it, and the more I look at it from a character standpoint and from a storyline standpoint, I almost think it would be better off if WWE would keep Triple H as their WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And in fact, I think they should keep Triple H as their WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Now, keep in mind, I am still a Roman Reigns fan. I have nothing against Roman Reigns. I don't hate the guy whatsoever. I think the guy is great. And I do not think this is a video where people should take this as me saying I don't think Roman Reigns is quote-unquote not ready. I hate that when wrestling fans say, this guy's not ready, when many guys who weren't ready to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion went on to become the World Champion. See Seth Rollins last year. Are you guys going to really try to sit here and tell me Seth Rollins was ready to become World Champion? Not even close. Seth Rollins as a character was nowhere near close to becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Sure, he had a nice rub in the triple threat you know, championship match at the Royal Rumble, but besides that, his character was nowhere near re ready to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And even though, yes, his title reign was pretty boring and led to low-ass ratings for the company, I think he did favorably well in his championship reign. Not a great title reign. It was a boring one for sure, but he did favorably well. He passed the test. And so really, to be honest, when people say Reigns isn't ready for the main event, I ask the question if Seth Rollins was ready for the main event. And no, he wasn't ready for the main event. And we don't know what Reigns can do in the main event scene until we see him with that long title reign. It's kind of like with Randy Orton for so many years. You know, Randy Orton... Really, he was known as the youngest World Heavyweight Champion. But really, to be honest, we didn't know what he would do with the long title reign. And then over the years, we saw what happens when you give Randy Orton a long title reign. He just doesn't work out well with those long title reigns. Sort of like with TNA with Jeff Hardy, for example. Jeff Hardy has always been a guy that, you know, fans generally like. <coughs> you know, they can get behind Jeff Hardy. They like what Jeff Hardy brings to the table. He's initially a fan favorite no matter where he goes. But the thing was... What WWE realized with Jeff Hardy is, hey, this is not a guy we can keep a long title reign with because, one, even though, yes, Jeff is fun to watch and he has his shtick, he's more of a great chaser than he is a world champion. He's not someone that we want to hold the belt for a long period of time. He's more of just a good transitional guy for, for the real champion we want to put the belt on. And he will help whoever the heel is facing him because Jeff Hardy normally gets cheered. TNA tried it where they were going to give Jeff Hardy a long title run and look at what happened with TNA with Jeff Hardy as champion as a long reigning base champion. It didn't really help them all that much. So certain guys, we don't know yet if they're ready to be a long reigning world champion unless they get the ball and run with it. So to me, really, to be honest, when fans say Roman Reigns is quote unquote not ready, I say look at all the guys who have won the world title when they did. Some of them weren't ready. WWE doesn't really build up their guys to be ready to become world champions for the most part. So this whole not ready thing is not coming from me. You know, I'm not saying Roman Reigns is not ready because they already gave the belt to him two times. So he obviously is ready in their eyes to give him the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I'm just saying from a character standpoint and just looking at Roman Reigns, the wrestler as a whole and how WWE is going to use him. I just don't see him winning at WrestleMania 32 to be a benefit for him as a character. Because really, to be honest, I am tired of the feel bad for Roman, feel sympathy for Roman storylines that the WWE tries to do with this guy. But in all honesty, if Roman Reigns took a one-on-one -on -one loss at WrestleMania 32, I think a lot of people would kind of be shocked by it, especially if it was a clean loss. And not only that, when you look at the history of Triple H as a character in the WWE, the dude has done so much against so many big stars at WrestleMania. I mean, this guy beat Brock Lesnar at one point at WrestleMania. This guy is beating this guy at WrestleMania. Sure, Triple H has a more losing record at WrestleMania, Mania then he does a winning one, but he still has a huge list of people in the past who he has beaten that are bigger than Roman Reigns. So really, to be honest, a Triple H beating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 32 would actually help the Roman character because look at Cena's character throughout the year. When you look at Cena's characters, character I should say, he hasn't changed, but throughout the years of WrestleMania of who he lost to, 
How many one-on-one -on -one matches can you remember Cena losing? I can't even think of so many. The only one that he beat, that he lost to one-on-one -on -one was The Miz and The Rock. Those are the only two I can think of where he lost one-on-one -on -one and one-on-one -on -one situations. For the most part, Cena always wins his one-on-one -on -one matches and especially the championship matches. So there's no feeling of, oh, I want to see if he can redeem himself at the next WrestleMania. It's just that, oh, Cena lost and... Or, oh, Cena won, so let's just move on to the next feud. See, with Reigns winning, I feel like it just wouldn't help the Reigns character whatsoever because I honestly don't think he needs to win at this year's WrestleMania. I mean, he's already done something that he should have done at this year's WrestleMania, and that's become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. For me, what's the story being told for Reigns trying to get redemption on the authority? To me, there would be better redemption factor if Reigns doesn't succeed in redemption. You know, we don't always need the baby faces to succeed. Really, to be honest, we want to see more powerful villains in the WWE, and to be honest here, Triple H is going to be one of the better villains we get in the WWE. That's why I was saying Batista should win at WrestleMania 30 instead of Daniel Bryan, because because, yeah, sure, Daniel Bryan would be a great story. Daniel Bryan overcomes the odds and becomes world champion. But we still didn't get that one villain in the WWE that we're missing. We're missing that heel that everyone can despise. And Triple H winning the match, sure, fans are going to cheer him. But then once they realize what's really going on with Triple H, and once they kind of realize that, oh, Triple H is not going to put over who we think he's going to put over, because I think there's many fans who truly believe, yes, Triple H should win at Mania and then go on and put over Seth Rollins. And to that I say, why? Why would a Triple H put over a Seth Rollins? Because look at Seth Rollins, for example. Sure, Sting put over Seth Rollins, but Sting, that's his job. Sting's not a full-time active guy on the roster. He is not there to put over Seth Rollins. And Sting always feels like his next match in WWE is going to be his last, so he likes to lose. So take Sting out of the equation, and really, to be honest, Seth Rollins can't really do shit clean either way. I mean, Randy Orton wouldn't even put him over at WrestleMania. What well, makes you me, me believe that Triple H at Battlegrounds are going to be like, okay, Seth, I'm going to put you over now. No, he's not going to put over Seth Rollins whatsoever. So to me personally, I feel like Triple H being able to kind of take on Seth Rollins and take him down would actually help the Seth Rollins babyface turn even more because we will solidify Triple H as that overpowering villain that I feel like I'm missing in the WWE, the villain that I hate, the villain that I despise. It's... And I guess you could say it's like, well, that's not real heat. That's like X-Pac, get the fuck out of my TV heat. But at the same time, it brings us that terrifying villain that we all fear in the WWE. And it actually gives us a reason to boo over someone that has so much power. Because really, to be honest, Triple H, he should be that one heel we should all hate. He should be that one guy that when a babyface finally beats him, it's going to be a big deal. Sure, WWE would probably screw this up like I think they would if Triple H retained and they would have John Cena go on to beat Triple H because, yeah, Cena always has to be the hero at the end of the day. But to me personally, I feel like Triple H winning at WrestleMania 32 gives more options and avenues for the WWE and also helps the Roman Reigns character out a bit. Because, see, unlike WrestleMania 31 where there's a screw job finish and you're like, oh, well, Roman could have won if it wasn't a screw job, he has a definitive loss. We can't be sitting here and saying to ourselves, Roman Reigns is being shoved down our throats, or WWE only cares about Reigns and no one else. No, he has a definitive loss. He lost to Triple H at WrestleMania 32. He has a definitive loss. He couldn't do what Daniel Bryan could do. He couldn't do what John Cena could do. He has a definitive loss in his career where we can look back at and say, hey, maybe this actually helps Roman Reigns. Because really, to be honest, if you have Reigns win at this WrestleMania, you're just going to get booed out the building because people fear he's going to be like the next John Cena. And instead of giving people a reason to cheer for Roman Reigns or anything like that, you're just going to get more fans more of a reason to resent and boo the character of Roman Reigns. And his character won't change. Because we know in the past that you guys are not really big on changing your characters to a big level. And sure, you could do a double turn in this match and make Make Roman Reigns a heel, but really, to be honest, when I look at Roman Reigns, do I really want him as a heel? Like, seriously, do I want Roman Reigns as a heel? Like, this guy that's like six foot four, 250 pounds, rolling out of the ring, running away from Dean Ambrose out of all people in the world, or rolling out of the ring if he has to go on and face off against someone smaller like a Sami Zayn of the world. No, I, I don't want to see Roman Reigns being a coward chicken shit heel. That's what hurt Sheamus, was that Sheamus looked like, okay, this guy plays the part of a big-time badass, yet Sheamus, every time he's been world champion, has 
run away from everyone. It's like, no, that's what hurts these big time heels is that all your heels are chicken shit pussies and they're not real deal threats. Roman Reigns, if he was to be a heel, should be a real deal threat. We, we don't know who can stop this monster in Roman Reigns. And guess what? If Roman Reigns does turn heel, we all know who's stopping that monster. Take your Seth Rollins and your Dean Ambrose and push it to the side because John Cena is go going to be the only one to stop that monster. And if you don't believe that, you are blind. Because there's only one man who stops monsters in the WWE. And it's not going to be Seth Rollins or Dean Ambrose. It's going to be John Felix Anthony Cena. So you just give a reason and excuse to have John Cena have a big match for him to win. So really, to be honest, Reigns turning heel wouldn't be the best option either because all it would do was kind of get the fans maybe behind him, especially if he starts cutting more breaking the fourth wall promos, which really, to be honest, is kind of sad. That's the only way wrestlers can get over nowadays is by breaking the fourth wall instead of actually being legit characters. So for me, heading into WrestleMania 32, I think the best option would be is for Triple H to walk out as WWE World Heavyweight Champion, setting him up as a big-time villain for your company, and plus helping the Roman Reigns character out because he actually has a definitive loss. Not a loss where we're sitting here like, oh man, WWE protect Roman in this loss, or oh man, like even if Triple H uses the sledgehammer to win this match, it, it's not a big deal because he's used the sledgehammer in the past to win matches, okay? So it's not like this is like, oh, they're protecting Roman. No, Triple H has finished many other top guys with the sledgehammer, has used the sledgehammer against many other top guys. So really, to be honest, if Triple H wins via cheating, it doesn't hurt Roman. We're talking about a definitive one-on-one -on -one loss where Roman just gets his ass kicked by one man and one man only. That would help Roman Reigns out as a character for, for greater than having him either turn heel or him just winning the belt straight out. Because if you just have him win the belt straight out, I think you will just get a bad return on your investment. And I, I'm not counting out Triple H to retain the title at WrestleMania 32. I mean, this is Triple H for fuck's sakes. I mean, Triple H has his backstage pool. Whether you guys believe it or not, he still likes to play politics every once in a while. And I could see Triple H whispering in Vince's ear saying, hey. Maybe it'll be best for business if I retain. So who knows what we're going to see at WrestleMania 32 when it comes to this match. But I think the best option would be for Triple H to walk out as the WWE Heavyweight Champion for a character standpoint. Because I feel like he would become a better heel. Something that we're missing in WWE. A legit heel with legit heat that we can actually despise and hate. So what do you guys think? Should Triple H walk out as WrestleMania 32 with the championship? Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Comment down in the comment section down below. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you guys like what you see, give this one a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. I'll see you all next time. Peace.